Tim Alexander, the Earl Sterling, sitting in for Dr. Bill Deagle. I have uh, Paul Martin on today, and we're going to be discussing uh, world events, particularly uh, as they concern the Middle East and other things. Uh, hello, Paul. How are you doing today, Tim? Yeah, I'm doing fine. As usual, uh, you, you read the news from uh, the Middle East, and it's just like, wow, this is... This is beyond crazy. There is a report, Paul, uh, on Veterans Today that uh, essentially after meeting with uh, Obama and uh, British Prime Minister Cameroon and having them try to twist his arm, uh, Putin evidently uh, has just, he's had it with them. He, uh, uh, the report says that the S-300 system is now already in Syria. That's uh, one of the best air defense systems in the world. Uh, the latest variant is probably better than our Pac-3, but it's in that broad range. But he's also shipping the S-400 air, air defense system, and that uh, is several years ahead of anything that either the United States or the West has. In addition, he's sending two other systems, um, the uh, Skeet-5 ground-to-sea missile system, which I have to admit I don't really know too much about, uh, but also the uh, TOS, T-O-S-1-A, and I don't know the Russian pronunciation on this. It's spelled B-U-R-A-T-I-N-O. Uh, it's a armor system. It's based on uh, the T-72 tank chassis. It carries a armored box that has 24 uh, unguided missiles, but they, the, the key is the warhead. They're a thermobromic armor uh, destroying system. It's, it's basically a few air system, uh, which, as you know, is three to four times more blast per pound than anything else out there other than a nuclear weapon. And he is reportedly sending 400 uh, to Syria. So basically the Russians uh, have opened the doors of their armory uh, to Syria, and uh, they doubled down and tripled down the uh, and the chess game is going on. Also, in Russia, uh, on the outskirts of Russia near uh, Kakistan and the, 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 their far east, uh, there's a very large uh, arsenal with about 13 million shells, and it's been exploding. Um, and to me, it sounds very much like uh, it's payback for uh, what we just spoke of. The S-300 and 400 system uh, arsenals are designed not to not to blow up very easily, but uh, this one is blowing up spectacularly. Uh, so that's that's the immediate breaking news. Uh, well, I mean, even when I was in the Marine Corps, I mean, it, uh, when I was in Japan, we had a pretty formidable size. Uh, uh, Acreage of, of uh, weapons underground. Uh, it's and and I'm sure that the Russians, with a facility of that size, was was you know well taken care of. It. I mean you know nobody wants stuff like that blowing up. So the fact that it just blew up all by itself is highly suspect. Yeah, yeah, and and they're designed generally to to kind of be contained. That is, a, a section may blow, but uh, they're designed to contain the explosions. But if you look at the pictures, uh, it's on Russian television, RT, their site. Uh, they've got a, a number of videos and then uh, a, a number of still photos. And, I mean, the blasts are enormous. Uh, you see mushroom clouds. Well, it's not nuclear, but, I mean, uh, some really, uh, well, 13 million artillery shells. Man, that's a lot of artillery shells. This is, uh, uh, well, this area of Russia uh, is between the Republic of Tartistan and the Republic of Kakistan. Uh, the Russians have a history of putting a lot of, uh, uh, of really nasty stuff, like their 
biological weapon research and their chemical weapon research in the outlying areas uh, to keep it away from uh, the core of the Russian Republic itself, uh, certainly Moscow, St. Petersburg, and the other large cities. But, uh, yeah, it, it does sound like this is a retribution. And if it is, and if the Russians feel it is, they uh, will extract uh, a pound of flesh or several pounds of flesh. Um, for it, it may not be immediate, but uh, whoever did it will, will understand that payback uh, is not uh, a nice thing when uh, Putin gets gets done with him. Putin is not the kind of guy you would want to run into in a uh, an alley. He's not very big. Uh, he's a judo expert, but uh, you can just tell by looking at him. He's, uh, he's a tough character. And um, now, with all this stuff going into the Middle East, um, it, it Again, it, it raises the threshold level. If they've got the S-300 and now the S-400 system is going in, um, and they have other uh, lower-level and air systems that are really good, um, and then this uh, 400 of, of these uh, armored-destroying uh, vehicles, I wouldn't want to start a war with them. Um, they uh, they have some of the best technology that Russia has, and uh, Russia is also supplying them with uh, only ten of the latest MiG 29s. Now I'm not a big supporter of the MiG 29. I, I think it's a, a maintenance heavy plane, but the latest version, the one that they're sending to to uh, Syria, is designed for deep penetration missions. So it's it's an attack plane, and it's it's something you would load up with biologicals or chemical warheads uh, if you want to attack uh, Tel Aviv or, or uh, uh, an American base in the Middle East. And um, it's designed to get through. It's a very tough, very fast, very sophisticated plane. Um, now, you would think, okay, gee, with all this hardware and so forth, maybe we're not going to have a war. And, you, and I hope that will be the case. But uh, that would be um, sane, and I'm not sure we're dealing with what most people would call classically sane people when we're dealing with uh, the West. Um, there's a report, uh, and it's, it's pretty much verified, that the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, was insisting uh, at a... a Obama administration a meeting that the United States immediately attacked Syria uh, and began bombing, and he was overruled. Um, that's insane, and uh, that he's serving the interest of the global banking cartel that wants a world war, and the nuts in the Netanyahu administration who who want a general Middle East war so they can kill all their perceived enemies. Uh, of course, many of their own experts tell them that you don't want to do that because it's going to get us all killed, but they're, they're uh, too arrogant to understand that. Well, they've dug, they, they've dug such a ditch in this country, an, an, an economic implosion. Now we're having a political implosion. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, I think there was a poll out yesterday talking about 77% of the uh, American people no, long, no longer uh, believe in the uh, mainstream media. So the, the old foundations the, the, that we've had in this country uh, for low since the onslaught of the Federal Reserve system is now all imploding all about the same time. That's absolutely right. We'll be back in just a second after the commercial. today. He's taking a, a few days of much needed rest and recreation and uh, vacation here with his wife. Um, we have uh, on the horizon uh, about three viruses, Paul, that are very scary. 
And then, of course, if we end up in a general Middle Eastern war, uh, and if Iran is uh, attacked uh, either by us, NATO, slash uh, Israel, uh, with nukes, which, believe it or not, is a real possibility, um, they have a, uh, a doomsday counterforce uh, based on advanced biological genetically engineered weapons. Um, they hired uh, 21, 22, 23 years ago uh, many of the top scientists from the former Soviet Union in their BioPreparePet program. And they have spent uh, an enormous amount of money over two decades plus now uh, developing uh, a really horrific doomsday weapon system that is roughly equal to a global strategic thermonuclear uh, system. And uh, when I say equal, I mean in terms of the, the kill numbers. Uh, and the scary thing, when you look at the Bible, and it speaks of uh, the final battle, a third will die of wormwood, which we now know wormwood is uh, the name for Chernobyl. So a third will die of nuke fallout and nuclear war, and a third will die of plague, which is a generic term uh, that uh, seems to imply advanced biological warfare, genetically engineered manufactured diseases. Now, on the break, we were talking about three of the, the diseases that we know are now working uh, the population. You want to? Yeah, well, wanna... I think the the biggest one right now with the highest uh, death rate is the MERS, which is the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. Uh, over in Saudi Arabia, it's in Jordan, it's in Qatar, it's all over the Middle East. There's a cluster in England, uh, France, Germany. Uh, there's a cluster in Florence, Italy. A Jordanian businessman had gone into uh, a, a, excuse me, a, uh, a, a gentleman that lives in Florence went to Jordan for business, stayed over there for some time. By the time he got back, he was sick and then died and infected uh, several people in the hospital. But what we've got with that mirrors is a is a sixty fifty to 65% death rate. It's a respiratory deal. Uh, most of the uh, uh, it's people are our age and older, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, that have passed away from this. Uh, recently, we've had uh, one 14-year-old girl and another female student over there that died. Right now, they've got a cluster breakout in Taif, uh, which is right next to Joy Oh Joy, uh, Mecca, Mecca, where they're getting ready to have this hot. So uh, I think the uh, hot starts uh, right at the end or beginning of the, well, the the beginning of the second week in July this year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for our listeners who may not be aware of what the hot is, it's a religious uh, undertaking that all Muslims or at least all Muslim men are supposed to to do at least once in their lives. And literally millions of people fly in, and there are these enormous, you know, 747, uh, A380 aircraft that are full of people flying in, chartered planes and, and airliners. And they they come in, and they put white robes on, and they go to this uh, uh, this place in Mecca where they have uh, and any people in the Muslim place forgive me because I'm Christian and I don't know all the, the names and details but there's this great big black uh, kind of monolith rock and they circle that um, and then there's at one point they throw stones at it or something but uh, it is a, a major religious undertaking and people come from all over the world. That's the key. Uh, with this disease breaking out and mutating, and quite possibly new variants being released, because this to me is a is a genetically engineered. We, we don't know where it came from. We don't know the original vectors, what animals it was originally in. We just know it dis it appeared out of nowhere, and now it's mutating. Um, it's got about a two-week incubation period, which is kind of normal for a, a bio-war uh, weapon. 
what when you when you release a a, a biowar you have a virus you have the first wave which is the people that in, uh, that you initially seeded it in and that's assuming you you do a mass seeding and then uh you have the second wave now of course I, I'm, we've had early waves but i mean the first big wave from this thing could be those people returning from the hodge and you don't know that they're sick there's no real indications that they're sick for two weeks the second wave will be 10 times to 20 times that number, maybe more, but it will certainly include a lot of physicians, nurses, EMTs, uh, respiratory therapists, hospital workers. And that is really scary because when the third wave and the fourth wave hit, you're going to have a much reduced um, medical uh, facility, uh, medical uh, uh, manpower available because you will have killed or incapacitated many of the the uh, nurses, the doctors, and so forth, and that that just makes a, a nightmare situation all the worse. And people well, have I, studied I, I, this stuff, and I mean, it is scary as hell. Well, one of my uh, uh, friends is a uh, head of security for a level three lab, and one of his friends is a uh, doctor who specializes in very lethal um, diseases, uh, and uh, I was talking to him last Friday, and uh, he'd asked his doctor his opinion of this MERS, and he, and he said it scares the hell out of him, and he said, this guy doesn't get scared. So, uh, and on the, on the cusp also is we've got the H7N9, and I posted a, there's a really good article all about the H7N9 up on my website, uh, revolutionradio.org. You can read it. It will explain to you a little bit about the H7N9. And one of the things that uh, uh, that my friend gets is a monthly publication. It's backed by 8,000 researchers. It's not classified, but it's not really for, you know, public release. And uh, he was telling me there's two teams over there right now that, uh, as he put it, are wearing the pins uh, in this uh, latest uh, issue of this of this paper that he got. Uh, it is the opinion of these researchers that are over there, these two teams, that all this bug has to do is take one more little tweak. And I think it's already gone human to human. Well, yeah, but, there, it, there's evidence it has. Yeah, well, we'll cover it when we get back from the break. Yep. Report show with Tim Alexander, the Earl Sterling, and Paul Martin on uh, talking about really, really scary stuff. And uh, you know, we both have news blogs that uh, RevolutionRadio.org and uh, my Europe. Just do a Google search, Large Sterling Europe, you'll get there. We deal with this stuff seven days a week and have for years. That doesn't mean we like it. Uh, it, it you, and you really have to work hard sometimes not to be paranoid or depressed or what other, because you can see this stuff coming. You know the, the people that are involved. You know how evil they are. And uh, what helps you is, is faith in God. Uh, ultimately, this is a spiritual battle between Satan and God, and I'm on Satan. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> start to say that wrong. I'm on God's side, guys, uh, not Satan's side. I'm on the side of that's opposing Satan, and there is strength in that. God is love. God is good. Satan's the ultimate loser, and uh, those that uh, follow him don't have a very good future and eternity is a very long time to spend in hell uh, let's get back to this nasty bio war stuff uh, Paul well the three the three main concerns right now are naturally number one is the mirrors uh, over in uh, Saudi in it well actually the Middle East and it's it's moving around the world if you want to follow this I've got uh, two uh, uh, pieces on my website uh, 
that uh, it's at the top and it one says health and the other says pandemic. And like <laughs> Tim said, we I, I follow this stuff 24 hours, seven days a week, so you can follow up on it. But the the lethality of, of this mirrors, and I think uh, Ann Morrison covered it on the Dr. Eagle show last week with John Moore, and she said unequivocally this is a bioweapon in the the thing that got me out of uh, the Ann and John out, are very good, too, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah, I talk to John all the time. Uh, she said this bug doesn't have a burnout rate on it. What it's doing as we change, it's changing. So we've got to worry about that. And having said that, um, it, it, by the way, uh, the 65% kill rate, uh, and the, there are some questions about that because they, it's thought that perhaps in, in Saudi Arabia they're not reporting some of the minor cases, so it may be a, it may be more like 40%, but maybe not. That could be good or bad because it means there's actually more cases out there. Uh, in any case, when you do a biowar virus, when you create it, uh, one of the things that uh, is logical that they would do is create many variants of a particularly good virus. For instance, you may, may create thousands of viruses and only keep 50 or 10. But of those that you keep that are, are potentially very good bioweapons, then you tweak those. And you, when you tweak them, you keep each variation that, that is worthwhile to keep. So you can grow out variations and to the, to the public it looks like it's mutating on its own, but it may be your own mutations that you're releasing. However, having said that, keep in mind that genetically engineered viruses as a rule tend to be unstable because they have not evolved out in the open and they do tend to mutate at a higher rate. And that's why they're a doomsday weapon, because even if uh, the country releasing them has virus, uh, has vaccines for the virus, uh, once it mutates sufficiently, um, the vaccines may be absolutely useless. Well, that's what this uh, doctor at the uh, uh, bio lab was saying. Uh, my friend was asking him about, well, can we vaccinate against this thing? He said, absolutely not. He said, there's no way to protect yourself from them. that uh, Those two research groups over in uh, China right now were, were so amazed uh, at how many times that, that this H7N9 had actually mutated within a short period of time, which was actually eight. And then it mutated again and kind of jumped the shark. It became 100% Tamiflu resistant. So it's already mutated nine times. And uh, this uh, research group paper uh, states that these H-class um, viruses from May, June, and July is when they really, really, really start to mutate. So we may have a very interesting fall uh, by the time this thing gets over here. Another thing they were stating in their last uh, uh, review was that given the normal influenza rate in the United States, you know, 100, 150 million different, you know, different uh, types or uh, some people get sicker than others. But if this H7N9 that's in China, if it one more mutation, and like we said earlier, I think it's already gone human to human because the Chinese have already spent $6.3 billion fighting this thing, and it ain't been around that long, is that they're stating that if this does what they think it's going to do and it gets to the United States with the normal amount of influenza in this population, that this bug alone will kill 30 million. I think that's probably low, but uh, yeah. Well, uh, well, things, here's the interesting thing. You've got these three viruses. Now, the H1N1, by the way, uh, is very, very active in Venezuela. And Venezuela is the one country in South America that has been uh, most outside of the globalist bloc. Um, and I don't think that's an accident. You have it working in the Middle East, and of course, uh, or, or you have uh, uh, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, working in the Middle East, and the H7N9 working in China. Those areas uh, are potential targets 
for the global banking cartel Western uh, Alliance. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean this is a great conspiracy, but if I were in those countries and I were one of the intelligence uh, operatives or, or people running their intelligence services, I would be very, very concerned that this is a deliberate uh, attack, a deliberate warning, a threat, and uh, I would be looking at retribution. And that's a well, scary the one, thing. Well, the one thing that, that, that I talk about with my uh, favorite uh, brother Marine, he's a retired Colonel to combat troops Vietnam. It was a couple, two or three years ago, and I said, I said, Jim, I don't think they're afraid of our guns. And he goes, why not? I said, well, they can't, they can't fight that many American gun owners. They just can't. But I said, they, there's one thing that they can do. Well, I said, this is about three years ago. I said, they can lay them down. I said, a really good kick-your-butt pandemic. It's really hard to be tactical. It's hard to fight uh, uh, when you're dealing with sick people, sick parents, sick kids, uh, and stuff like that. So, Having we've all seen the massive rise of, of gun sales, ammo you can't hardly find it, gunpowder you can't hardly find it. People are hoarding everywhere, and with the sheer volume of that, uh, as you and I always talk about off air, uh, it, 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 a really good pandemic that just kills between us, uh, the two of us, and NSA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it solves a lot of problems with them. It, it gives of course it does hope. because they know that if 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 they try to enact a police state in America, there's 320, 330 million Americans, and one hell of a lot of us have guns and ammunition, and we're not going. And I'll guarantee you, if you try to goose step me into a gulag, I'll go down with my boots on. And that's how a lot of Americans feel. But it does solve a lot of problems. You spread a, a, a really deadly virus. You wipe out a big part of the population. You scare the living hell out of everybody else. And then you tell them they have to get in line to get their RFID chip, and they have to uh, get the vaccine. We can cure it. We can stop it. And by the way, you need food. You need water. Well, you have to get in line. You have to have your chip, et cetera, et cetera. That may be coming, and that's a, uh, I mean, that's a script that's literally right out of the Bible. That's very, to, to buy or sell, to, to basically eat, uh, to survive, you have to have some sort of a chip from the government. gears a little bit here. We're going to talk about uh, the economy, and uh, everything right now seems to be inter in interconnected, uh, both the growing economic chaos. Uh, we're already in a depression, but uh, of course, it, it looks like uh, we're going to look back at the economic uh, depression we're in right now as the good old days uh, soon. Uh, of course, all this military stuff, and uh, yeah, it's all interconnected. Uh, you have some information that's pretty interesting, Paul. You want to? <clears throat> well, one of my uh, uh, friends was part of the uh, poor farmers' lawsuit back in the '80s. The farmers were suing the government over a lot of they were doing shenanigans and holy prices and all that. But one of the our, uh, gentlemen that was our government was, was doing shenanigans. Uh, it's hard to believe. Go ahead. I, I, I know that's breaking news. It just happened. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the people that helped with that lawsuit was Dr. Walter Todd. Uh, Dr. Todd is uh, uh, very, very, very bright, and he was also head of the Dallas Federal Reserve for quite a few years. And uh, one of my friends was talking to him uh, over the weekend and uh, was asking him about the economic condition and when did the when did he think that this thing's really going to come on Velcro? And he said, probably by the end of of uh, the summer. Uh, he was telling his buddy to uh, get all of your preps done and get them done quick. So, uh, you know, he, having been uh, in the Federal Reserve System for quite a period of time, he's uh, 
like I said, well, when you're president, there are what eleven Federal Reserve banks that make up the Federal Reserve system. Each has a president, and then there's the uh, 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 the chairman. So you are right. one of the key insiders. Exactly, and uh, so uh, for for the listeners out there, uh, you've got some time uh, to uh, you know get what you need to get. And one of my other uh, uh, my East Coast source. Uh, his last briefing was, there is going to be a food crisis. He told, he said, tell all your friends to get all of the long-term storage foods that they can possibly get. So if we look at this, the banking crisis, we look at uh, the, the distinct possibility of the A7N9 or the mayors uh, coming in this fall with a economic collapse, a food crisis, uh, all these, and you just, and everything is interconnected. But well, you know, uh, Doctor Deagle often speaks of uh, deniable plausibility, uh, plausible deniability. I said it backwards. I'm sorry. Uh, when when we're talking about uh, these bioweapons, I think uh, they have a playbook, and depending on you know how it unfolds, but I think one main scenario they see is. The economic uh, collapse of basically the global economic system uh, coupled with a horrific war in the Middle East that evolves into a global war, a third world war. Early on, I think they will see that uh, many people will finally, when their their very lives and the lives of their children are at stake, will say, "Hold it, you so and sos, you you've done this, you 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 got us into this war, you you've let the economy go to hell, you've done this," and people will take to the streets. And the way to keep them out of the streets, particularly in places like America where we're heavily armed, is, as we just talked about a few minutes ago, uh, a biological warfare attack. And you don't want it necessarily to be blamed on the war that you just got us into, uh, although you may, in broadly speaking, blame uh, mirrors on the Arabs because, uh, you know, it comes from uh, uh, Mecca and all this. But you don't want to necessarily say it's bio war. It's a naturally occurring thing. So it's been out there for, you know, a few months, slowly spreading, and now all of a sudden it explodes. Well, that keeps the people off the street. You tell people you've got to stay in your house, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you have a period of time when people who might be inclined to riot, who might be inclined to overthrow your governments, uh, are afraid to get out. And then, of course, if you get in a situation where you end up nuking Iran, Iran will respond with their equivalent, which will be a massive bio, advanced bio-war attack on North America and Europe and parts of the Middle East. And Iran will basically already be dead, but they'll be killing us long after most of them are dead. There won't be enough people alive in a lot of Iran even to bury the dead, but they'll be creating a modern black death. And it might be not one virus, it may be 25 or 50 different viruses. But by that time, we'll be too scared, too many people dying, we, you know, we won't be able to overthrow. Keep in mind, this is insane, but it's so, and the reason we call it insane, even a, a, even a nut wouldn't want to do this. But that's why it's demonic. That's why it's on a spiritual level. It's it's Satan who knows he's about to, you know, be thrown in his, the bottomless pit for a thousand years. He wants to kill the human race, and um, that's where we're headed. Now, this this economic thing, they have just set us up in so many ways that we are so buried with debt, and there are so many things that can trigger. And today the stock market was down, what, 250 points or more at one point. I, don't, I, I haven't – we've been on the air, so I don't know, you know how it closed. But uh, there are so many things. And you know, what are we talking about, the uh, 1.5 quadrillion uh, in the uh, – uh, oh, I'm tired. What am I trying to say? The uh, – uh, uh, it's – the junk they write, you know, to it's 
anyway, uh, the economic system is a house of cards. It's a, it's it's a fantasy, and it would take very little, very little to collapse it all. There's 140 some sh small retail shops and medium sized retail shops and large retail shops in Italy that are closing every day, and that's in Italy. And uh, God knows what it's going to be like here when it really hits. But yeah, you're right. We need to. You need to have food. You need to have water. You need to have. Think of toilet paper. I mean, how many months can you? You need to have several months of supplies. Um, if bio war breaks out, you need to self quarantine. That's the way you survive. Canned items, uh, freeze dried food if you can if you can get it. But just you know, rice and canned items and the ability to cook something because your your gas may your electric means may not be working. You may not be able to get water out of the tap. You uh, you may you need to have buckets with lots of uh, garbage bags uh, that you can put a toilet seat on um, and a shovel to bury it. If you live in an apartment, you know you're going to have to, to be very careful. If you have pets, you're going to have to have a lot of pet food. Uh, there are a lot of things like that. You need to sit down and think: What will I need for three months, or four months, or five months? And uh, if you want to live, chances are you can, but you've got to be prepared for it, and you've got to have the, the gumption and the will uh, to make it through. All right? Did we lose Paul? I think we lost Paul. Yeah, okay. Uh, see if you can get him back, John, if you can. Um, but anyway, uh, you really, uh, this is a survivable thing, and the most important thing is to get right with God. Um, God will give you strength if you let him. Uh, you don't have to, to run like a chicken with his head cut off. We've seen this stuff coming for a long time. And uh, Dr. Deagle and many other people on his show and myself, we talk about this. And I know some people think, you know, we're, we're chicken little uh, uh, and conspiracy theorists and we're, uh, we're unnecessarily scaring people. But unfortunately, as this thing is developing, uh, all the kind of stuff that we've been warning of seems to be coming true. The changes in the weather pattern, um, Dr. Zagari, Dr. Deagle, John Moore and I were warning over two years ago was going to happen with the, the Gulf uh, oil disaster and the use of core action to the And well, folks, it's our time is up. I'll be back on tomorrow uh, from 4 to 5. Um, of course, the show will be on the, the full usual time tomorrow. Um, God bless you. Get right with God.